also tribes, 44th, 43rd, or the 45th, that's the words we call it. Which one comes first? I'm not sure, maybe you know. But for what? For political oppression? Then what about us, the young people of this nation? Where do we belong? See, I live in a society where a conversation about tribe only happens when the political kingpins are looking for votes. It only happens when we need a referendum, or rather a census to trigger election. I was raised in a society where tribe defines your opportunity. A society where your last name especially betrays you. It is not on one instance where I've gone to a bank and the security person will first ask me, or rather speak to me in a different tribe, just to see my reaction. And when I say, don't understand, the next question will be, where was he, where to? Are you not ours? And my answer is always simple. I'm yours because I'm Kenyan. Because I'm Kenyan first before the other tribe you want to give me. So tribeless youth was a dream. A dream that one day Kenya will rise above tribal lands. A dream that the young people of Kenya will one day defy, defy all odds and speak against tribes. Not tribes, basically, but negative ethnicity. When tribeless youth came to be, the first question everybody asked me was, how can we do without tribes? We don't choose where to be born, but yes, we cannot do without tribes, but we can do without negative ethnicity. Because the negative ethnicity thought has led us to voting our people, like Mtuwetu, you know, the leader who comes from your tribe, whether they stand for any issues or not, has led us to fighting for our corrupt leaders so that we keep our people in leadership. Then what? Then what about the young people who've been rendered hopeless and jobless because of this thought, this mentality. Tribeless youth came to fill a gap by using art to communicate, upholding culture, but at the same time doing a lot of advocacy around the issues ailing us as young people. Tribeless youth came to speak for those people who are killed unjustly. I'm not sure if we all remember, but in 2017, August 10th, a six-month-old baby was killed. Baby Pendo. Her name was Samantha Pendo. For what? Did she vote? No. What was her crime? Her crime was being Kenyan and being born in Kenya. Yet justice has never thrived. I am a mother to a five-year-old who looks up to me every time, thinking maybe that his future lies where my decisions are. His future depends on that one time I'll walk out there and say enough is enough and we need a sane country. His future depends on a corrupt free country, which we know we are not going to find anytime soon unless we all stand and fight towards it. Tribalism has seen us turn against our neighbors, has seen us kill our brothers and sisters. Why? Because after five, every five years, our politicians have a way to introduce us to something I call the idiot festival, the elections. They come, divide us. They come, tell you how you need to belong to your tribe, how you need to travel back home so that you're safe. They come tell us um, how it is important not to vote the other tribe, because if you do, some say, some men will start wearing shorts. It's insane, but we dive into it. That's why I call it the Idiot Festival. 
Then after the next few months, we dive into a campaign season. Yet we cannot access healthcare. Yet our kids cannot go to school. But we are taxed every day. We have a majority of young people who are not employed right now. Crime rates going high, but who cares? Who's talking about it? But then in a few months, we will all walk out, start going back into our tribal cocoons, start talking about who should get what, which tribe should get what. And at the end of the day, it hurts us, the common people, the common person. I take this opportunity basically to throw a challenge to all of us. What are you doing to change the situation? What are you doing to make sure that the generations to come will stand and say, thank you for being there for us. Thank you for defending us. Thank you for just standing there and standing for me and my future. So I hope and I'll share my mantra with all of you that when we walk out of this place, all of us will share a thing that we've learned. Each one, teach one. Thank you.